All good. Right on time. Please stand for a flex loop. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In conformance with the open public meeting law, public law 1975, Chapter 231, adequate notice of this meeting setting forth the time, date, place, and purpose of this regular meeting. Through notice posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building, mailed or requested and paid for same, and published in the suburban trends. Roll call, please. Mayor, sir. Here. Council President Riker. Here. Councilman Bay. Here. Councilman July. Here. Councilman Zacchino. Here. Councilwoman Holder is excused. Yes. Councilman Bennett. Here. With us this evening is our borough attorney Joseph Ragno and our borough administrator Kevin Boyle. Okay, thank you. So it's my honor to swear in the Pompton Lakes Volunteer Fire Department. Before we get started, just a little note about how much time and energy this whole group puts into our town. You know, I unfortunately get their call on my phone of how many times they return, uh, go into calls, and they're all day, all night, all the time. So our hats off from everybody up here to you guys for all the time and energy you put into it. You know, when, when they start showing for, you know, Carbon monoxide or uh, fire alarms, three, four at a night, one o'clock, five o'clock, seven o'clock, takes a toll on you. You still have to go to a job after that. So uh, it's congratulations to everybody before you swear to anyway. With that, why don't you all come step up?
Yep. You can just leave them on the table down there and we'll pick them up later. That's where it goes. And do it there. Thank you. Okay, we're going to start our regular meeting. If anybody would like to leave, now's your chance to get out. If you'd like to stay, you're more than welcome. Thanks, guys. Hi, Paul. Right. Can you get off by me? It'd be perfect. <laughs> Take it easy, right? Okay, can I have a motion to open the meeting for public comments? So moved. Council President Riker, Councilman DeLine. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Anyone from the public like to address? You're Randy Hinton, 443 Montclair Avenue. <coughs> I'm speaking for the Shade Tree Commission. Um, I want to thank the Mayor and Council at the last Council meeting. You brought up Resolution 1944, opposing the Assembly Bill and the Senate Bill, known as Vegetation Management Response Act. Um, recently, I just got an email from Donna Massa from the Shade Tree Federation, and she said that it did pass the Assembly. Okay. Uh, well, it's not good. We were opposing it. No, no. Good job. You just try to leave that door open. It has to stay open. It's not good. We were opposing it. Oh, I'm sorry. I have a question. Okay. Um, but I was just wondering how that works out. With the resolution that you just proposed last meeting, do you contact the, the assemblyman in our area as to your opposition? Or is it just, where does it go from once you pass the resolution? We send it off, right? The resolution, resolution goes to the governor. So Senate and Assembly people from our area receive a copy of that? Okay. Because uh, I just sent an email to all of you again on her response as to what happened that it did pass the Assembly. Okay. So I was just curious. So hopefully you all got it and, uh, and that we can do something and knock it down. The way it was worded when I read it, um, like Pete Watiri from the Shade Tree Commission, who worked on the horizon, <clears throat> he understands that the electrical utility corp companies have permission to clear the lines for storms and stuff. But this opens it up to all utilities that can just come on our own personal property and remove shrubbery and trees without notifying us or anything. And we've seen the job the electric company does. They don't do the best job when they're putting no, those trees. No, no. I was just on Central right. today. And uh, we were looking at trees that they... Yeah, so if you come across something you want us to do, let us know. We'll, we can follow up on Okay, it. well, just to follow up on this, with, uh, Rui, is he, is he an assemblyman? He's an assemblyman. Yeah, and he's, he's a good friend. I can call him and find up. Yeah, call he's him. a good friend of uh, Pumped on Lights. So yeah. You can touch base with I can him definitely on. do that. Appreciate it. Thank you. And I just want to add, I want to thank the Shade Tree Commission for helping out the Girl Scouts. They came up with the help of uh, Dallas Tree Service to make some nice table pieces they were looking for. Everybody else seemed to give me an issue, but they were able to get it done. So please let them all know. Good evening. My name is Maureen Bernstock. I live at 316 Romaine Avenue, Compton Lakes. I'm also a member of the Variance Committee for our town. And zoning, I, zoning board. I'm sorry? Zoning board. Yes. Yeah. And I have a couple of questions. We were in receipt yesterday of a letter from um, Joseph Ragno, mm -hmm. and it talked about a, um, a board of adjustment decision on with regard to the Compton Lake senior citizen housing and the right of way. And uh, the letter is dated January 10th, but it says in the body of the letter, that on November 26th, uh, the council had given up its right of way to that property. And uh, with the give, you know, with relinquishing that, that right of way, that put us, the board of, um, 
of adjustment and in a very difficult position. Additionally, the letter from uh, Joseph Rodno said that uh, the council would not fund any litigation that was connected to this particular situation. And um, that gives rise to uh, several questions that I have that are bothering me. And I would like, since I have you all here, I would like to ask those questions of the board. May I? Uh, well, I'll answer for them. If they want to step in, they can. They're not going okay. to answer each question. Um, was any compensation given to the town for giving up the right of way? No. Uh, what conversations did the council have with the senior housing people before they gave up the right of way? No. Everything came from the zoning board meeting. Nothing other, no other meeting. Okay. And um, do you think that the council might have taken the time to uh, bring us on the count on the board? The, zoning board up to up to speed on what was going on because this really affected us in a very negative way. I agree with time. you 100 percent. So to answer your question about that, your attorney was aware of what was going on. And his, your attorney on the board was aware of the decision we made November 10th and he was to bring that to you. That's his job as the attorney to bring that information to you. We made our decision here with the help of the board, and we made our decision that the attorney gets the copy of that, and then it goes to you, and he is to bring it to your discussion. If he did or didn't, I don't know. Um, I would have to speak to him and ask him. Uh, at the end of the day, the concern the council has, we've been, uh, um, we've asked advice of a couple different attorneys, including your own board attorney, mm -hmm. uh, and they said there is a chance you could lose this lawsuit. This council cannot spend tax dollars on a lawsuit that might not win. Um, it's not fair to the residents to put out money because of an issue that we're sh not sure of. That being said, the vote was taken, and it was a, a passable vote, but there wasn't a quorum. You had a four to two, and you were there, so I know you understand. Uh, yeah. I'm explaining to I'm everybody else. That. There was a four to two vote in favor of the variance, but one member of the uh, board did not watch the tape, so they couldn't vote. So we didn't have a quorum. So that told the board that there was interest to pass, I told our board here, there was interest in passing this across. It's just that they didn't have the quorum, the number to vote. All right. Well, I understand the history of it. I'm and I know. Here. I'm just explaining for everyone. Uh -huh. um, but my concern is, had we known uh, about our status as far as um, legal coverage, is concerned. Say, uh, explain. Well, this letter says that uh, we would be on our own with this particular lawsuit. So, th so that's something that's a, a misnomer here. That's not true. You guys are never on your own. You're you're doing a function of a board for the town. You are always protected by the town. Yeah. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Two, two things. Two things concerning that. First, uh, well, actually, three things. First, this lawsuit is against the zoning board, but not against the individuals on the zoning board. So no, nobody individually on the board is in any jeopardy of any kind. Mm -hmm. Second, uh, you board members uh, are uh, covered under the insurance policies that the borough has with, with the GIF. Uh, and it, it would take an extraordinary uh, lawsuit uh, alleging very few things that could make that coverage not be there. One might be a civil rights violation, for mm -hmm. instance, but it that's sure not the not. case here. Uh, and and lastly, uh, lastly, I forgot what I was going to tell you. Um, I'm having a knowledge of our ordinance. Say that again. The ordinance that we passed before. Oh yeah, but that, that's uh, those are the two most important things. Uh, oh, and, and the third thing is the, the governing body chose not to fund the defense, but that that has no effect on you because you aren't a defendant in the case. Uh, only the zoning board itself is a defendant in the case. Uh, and they took that into consideration. And uh, my my advice to the to the mayor and council would have been entirely different, by the way, if the lawsuit had been the senior citizen group versus the zoning board and each individual member. Mm -hmm. I, I would have looked at it entirely differently mm -hmm. uh, because that could have created some issues. Uh, oh, I know what the third thing is. The third thing is, except on in the rarest of circumstances. Every member of the zoning board has what's called absolute immunity from liability. 
the law says that you cannot be held responsible for your bona fide actions while you're sitting on the board, so long as they don't fall into a very limited category. Again, one of those would be a violation of somebody's civil rights, for instance. But it would be the rarest of circumstances where any member of that board would be uh, held liable for anything because you have absolute immunity. Well, the other thing that uh, comes to mind, and I was aware of most of what you said, but uh, the other thing that comes to mind is that we sat through, as a board, we sat through, I don't know how many hours of testimony from uh, the senior citizens place. It was very long. Mike, you were there. From much of it, not all of it, but you were there. And we put in a lot of time on you this. You did, no question. And uh, there were things that we were unhappy with in terms of the report from the senior citizens. Unfortunately, that one board member was not, you know, able to vote. And maybe that would have changed things. I don't know. We don't know. But by changing the, and correct me if I'm wrong, but by changing the right of way, you've made it easy for them to sue us. No, no that's not the case at all. Uh, when we vacated the right of way, and by the way, municipalities vacate rights of ways all the time uh, when they're no longer needed for a public purpose. This uh, the council decided it was no longer needed for a public purpose. They vacated the right of way. What, what it does, what it does do, is it makes one contiguous piece of property, but that contiguous piece of property, in a fashion, was always there. But but the right of way, because there's uh, ownership on each side of the right of way, mm -hmm. owned by one. Uh, one entity. Ownership, one entity, right? All of that land then becomes the property of, of that entity. Well, what prompted the board, or the council, excuse me, uh, to vacate that right of way after all these years? I think it was a letter to the planning board. Uh, From whom? Actually, actually, the planner, the planner oh, who, is, okay. who is On your hired meetings. by the municipality reviewed the entire matter, and it was the planner's opinion uh, and, and it seems like, uh, having uh, I've done land use in my career, it seems like not an unreasonable opinion that it was a right of way, no longer serving any purpose for the, for the public, and no re there was no reason not to vacate it. Well, my next thing is um, this left a very sour taste. No question. In the uh, for the words. Uh, and, and I'm going to jump yeah. in there for a second. On. That was the unfortunate side of this whole thing. The people on your board put a lot of time and energy into what they do, and they've been doing it a long time. And uh, I think they're all good at what they do also. Um, the, the fact of the matter is I think the council looked at it as um, there was support from the board to make the variance happen, but unfortunate circumstances, which I blame on their attorney, by the way. He should have not taken the vote if he knew there wasn't someone We gave there. him that option. You did give him that option, no question. But I think at the end of the day, what, what happened was the council looked at this as, as a lawsuit we can't win. We've been told by different, three different groups that you're not going to win this lawsuit. It's an inherent use of the property. Mm -hmm. And they're a nonprofit senior housing department. There's going to be a little to fight against the fact that they're trying to do this for a reason except to bring more parking into their establishment because they don't have the funds to, to go out and spend money just for nothing. So for us to take taxpayer dollars to defend that, I'm not an issue. No, no, I'm, I'm just saying I'm trying to make educate everybody else because my concern trying. is um, is really not the expense involved. My concern <coughs> is the uh, disregard for yeah. the people who are on that committee, mm -hmm. who some of them have put in over 20 years yes. of volunteer work, and they feel like the rug was pulled right out from underneath them. And I have to tell you that I know of two, at least two, maybe even more resignations because of the situation. And, I, and I, I wish that wasn't happening, but you have to look at it from both sides. If we didn't do that and we went along with your recommendation, they would sue us. We would have to fight it in court. Or They did sue us. But what I seek here is not for you to change your mind. No, no, we're not what asking, I, asking for that. Why I am here is to clarify exactly what went on and how this right of way was relinquished. Mm -hmm. All right, that's number one. Number two, to make you aware that people who volunteer for a variance committee deserve some kind of respect. Mm -hmm. And if this was going to happen, you must have known about this before the letter was written. I spoke to Frank. Thank and you, Frank. No. 
We should have been told. If Frank didn't tell you, that's his thing. But Frank knew. I told Frank we would be fighting this. We would not be fighting no, this. We would not be fighting this. There's one other thing you should know, by the way. You, you say that the members of the zoning board are, are offended because they had the, the carpet pulled out from underneath their feet. That is not necessarily true. That's uh, how we feel. It well, doesn't matter what, what truth is in this oh, case. Okay. I understand that. Okay. That's an immaterial kind of thing. But we have a, a we, is immaterial. So, and I, I understand what you're saying, but this board here it was elected by the, the, the public mm -hmm. to do the best job they can in, in, in their budget. They felt, this board here felt, it was not in the best interest. And the only way to do that, because, you, because of the way the vote went, was to do it this way. There was no other way. There was a lawsuit already been put in place. There was nothing that we could change that. So now what happens? Because we voted last night uh, to vacate the right. lawsuit. Well, that's where I was getting So now to. what happens? That, what happens now is that's what I was trying to get to. It's a matter of what the truth is. The truth is one of two things could happen, if, if I'm not mistaken. Since it will be a default, the court will have to make a decision. The court could make one of two decisions, I think. I don't think there's a third option, but I'm not perfect, so maybe there is. But the court could simply say they're overruling the zoning board and they're granting the relief that was requested. I don't think that will happen, but it is a possibility. The second alternative is to vacate your decision, return it to your board, and have you go through the process. And that's what we want. That's what we were trying to get to with this whole process. We did not want to make the decision. We wanted to bring it back to a full board that would have the voting power with all the quorum members there, and wherever it falls, it falls at that point. Uh, unfortunately, because of whatever mix-up of the board, and, and I'm going to put some of the blame on the board for not telling the one party that they should have watched the tape previous to the meeting. That's mm -hmm. on the board, too, because they knew this was an important vote. They should have said, just watch the tape, then you'd be allowed to vote. But they told that person when they got to the meeting to watch the tape. Right. Someone should have called them a week before and said, watch the tape. This would have all gone away, in my opinion, if we had done it that way. But it didn't. So we're hoping it goes back to the board. That's what I think this whole well, committee feels up here. It goes back to the board. You guys vote again and see where it goes. I mean, we're, we're not going to keep fighting this. We just wanted a full vote. We saw the writing on the walls. Four to two was the vote in favor of the variance. It seemed like the board wanted this to, to go that way, but it didn't have the quorum. So we're giving it another opportunity to have that vote without having to put tax dollars out to fight it. So I think it's a win-win for everyone. Now, how the board is seeing it is a little different. And I understand it feels like it was pulled out from underneath you and you put that, I agree, you put the time in, no question. We were just trying to bring it back to the board. That's the part that the board doesn't want to hear right now. Mm -hmm. that they want to, we just want to bring it back to the board and make them decide. Um, but we also have to be financially responsible. As you're aware, there's two lawsuits at the zoning board level right mm -hmm. now. One of them we are going to uh, uh, back, different lawsuit. But again, that's going to cost money. You know, if we add all these lawsuits up, it's not fair to the taxpayers to pick up that cost. Do you know for a fact that the uh, senior citizen's uh, attorney is not going to proceed with his lawsuit against no, no. us? That so we, well, he doesn't have to proceed with his lawsuit. It's going to default. He's going to he's going to get a decision from the court, and the court will either grant the application, which again I don't think will happen, but it is possible, or they'll send it back. They'll vacate your decision and send it back to you for a rehearing. One of those two things will happen. It has nothing to do with the board's attorney now. And it's not us making okay. the decision. I mean, so we, we have never here made a decision, yes or no, on the project. What we're trying to do is put it back in your hands to make the decision on full counsel. So that's what's supposed to happen. Uh, so we're hoping that is, yes. How long will it take for the it to be sent to the courts? I, I have no idea. How, whenever the judge gets to it. Okay. All right, thank you. And I, and I appreciate, you know, please pass that on to the board, too, that, and I've talked to them individually. I know them all, and I've talked to them. And I want them to understand that we're not disrespecting anything they did as a board. Well, that's not I, I understand how it looks and how it came across. But if you sit and think about it, and I understand there was some discussion in closed session about a lot of what we're talking about, I would hope. I mean, I would hope the attorney brought some of this up. Um, so I hope that you understand where it's coming from that it's coming in a, in a protection of you. And, and, and the other problem is I think some of the board members think they're going to be personally sued and the town won't back them. And not just your board, any board. That's well, I, I don't think that was a major issue. It was just a question of what happens if the town council, uh, you know, says no to legal, legal backing and we wanted to go ahead with it. What would we do? Well, you would have no backing to move the forward. You, can't, you, couldn't. you couldn't. Right, you couldn't. Right. Right. So uh, that is the other issue here. Mm -hmm.
Well, but we know we knew that when we voted up here. We did know that. I kind of figured you did. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public like to address? Step up, please. Mike Stimmel, 25 West Lenox. <clears throat> uh, just for clarification on that, the property that was um, pur purchased, I believe, by the senior citizens was not purchased on a condition, right? It was purchased outright. So they already owned that new property on yes. the uh, AMP side of the street? Yes. They, pur they purchased the house. And, and right. the house. So, so what I think going back to what Maureen said is the vacation of the right-of-way could be done whether they even put an application there or not because once they owned both sides of the street regardless of what they did with the property there was no need to continue the right of way so the right of way really is not a, an issue so to speak that the board should be concerned with in my opinion only because once they owned both sides they had the planner's recommendation that that portion of the street be vacated so i just wanted to clarify that if i'm correct thank you Anyone else from the public like to address? See, seeing no one, can I have a motion to close the public session? Council so President Riker, Councilman Bay. Approval of minutes. Motion to approve the following minutes. Uh, January 9th, 2019. Regular meeting minutes. Closed session meeting minutes of January 9th, 2019. Have a motion. Councilman DeLine. Second. Councilman Bennett. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Uh, bills and claims. Motion to approve the following bills as listed below. I have a motion. So moved. Councilman Brian. Second. Councilman Bay. Petitions, we have none. Consent agenda, whatever you're ready. Does anyone wish to have any votes from the consent agenda? Anybody ask me? We're moving. No? Nope. Whereas the mayor and council of the borough of Lakes have reviewed the consent agenda consisting of various proposed resolutions. And whereas the mayor and council of Borough of Compton Lakes does not desire to remove resolutions for individual action from that agenda, now therefore be it resolved that the following resolutions on the consent agenda are hereby approved. Resolution 19-45 through 19-61. Can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Council President Riker? Second. Second. Councilman Jacanetta? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Resolutions for separate action. Resolution 1953, resolution establishing and adopting a complete streets policy for the borough of Compton Lakes. Take a motion first. Take a motion. Make a motion. Make a motion. motion. Councilman Bennett, you have a second? Second. Councilman DeLine? Yeah. Okay, discussion? Go ahead, Eric. You want to go with it? Yeah, so this, this policy um, establishes what's known as a complete streets policy, which is the, um, the idea that um, streets are to be um, sort of made made available for people that drive, that walk, um, whether by choice or necessity, that ride their bike, um, that use, have limited mobility. Um, it is quite long because there are, there's a number of language that is also required um, by Sustainable Jersey, of which we will get points for to, to do that. So what this, what this uh, policy basically does is anytime that there's a road project, or some other kind of project where a there there would be an, an impact on uh, the borough's roadway. Um, it it basically requires developers or the borough um, engineer to consider um, possible improvements to making uh, you know bicycle and pedestrian um, usability uh, more accessible to to the residents. So. It's the idea that, you know, because we are a compact community that we want to encourage this kind of um, non-motorized transportation, and um, this is sort of in line with what many other communities are doing around the state. And this follows along with the, uh, the complete streets implementation plan that has been developed over the last year, and um, at some point this year will be taken to the planning board as for adoption as a, a, an element of the master plan. Thank you. Roll call, please. Sorry. Councilman Jacanetta? Yes. Councilwoman Riker? Yes. Councilman Venom? Yes. Councilman Bay? Yes. Councilman Zalon? Yes. Okay. Uh, where are we? Now we're moving on to ordinances. Ordinances, yes. First reading. Final adoption will be on February 13th. 
Ordinance 19-07, and Ordinance amending Section 82 of Chapter 8, Noise of the Borough Administrative Code. Motion to approve Ordinance No. 18 for introduction. So moved. Councilman Bay, can I have a second? Second. Councilman Wine, roll call please. Councilman Jacanetta. Yes. Councilwoman Riker. Yes. Councilman Bannon. Yes. Councilman Bay. Yes. Councilman Zalon. Yes. Okay, ordinances for second reading, these have been advertised. Ordinance 19-01, an ordinance appointing Struble, Ragno, Attorneys of Law, Joseph J. Ragno, as Borough Attorney for the period January 1st, 19th through December 31st, 2019. Okay, can I have a motion to open the public meeting for Ordinance 19-01? So moved. Councilman President Riker. Second. Councilman Bannon, all in favor? Aye. Against? Anyone from the public like to address just this ordinance? Seeing no one, can I have a motion to close the public meeting? Public comments on Ordinance 19-01? So moved. Councilman Zalon. Second. Councilman Jacanetta, all in favor? Aye. Against? Motion to approve Ordinance 19-01 for final adoption. So moved. Councilman President Riker. Second. Councilman Bay, roll call please. Councilman Jacanetta. Yes. Councilwoman Riker. Yes. Councilman Bannon. Yes. Councilman Bay. Yes. Councilman Zalon. Yes. Do you want me to? We're going to do all this together. Okay. Yes. All except the last one. Okay. Okay, so Ordinance 19-02, authorizing the lease for Compton Lakes Riverdale, 1903. The lease for Compton Lakes Riverdale Soccer Association, 04, is the Compton Lakes Youth Organization. 05 is the Board of Education. Okay, can I have a motion to open the meeting for public comments on the Ordinance 1901 through 1905? No, two. Two, 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 two. I'm sorry, two through five. So moved. Councilman Ryan, Councilman Jacanetta. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Anyone from the public like to address just these ordinances? Seeing no one, can I have a motion to close the public meeting for public comments on Ordinance 19-2 through 5? So moved. Second. Councilman DeLine, Council President Riker, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion to approve Ordinance 19-02 through 19-05 for final adoption. So moved. Councilman DeLine? Second. Councilman Bennon, roll call please. Councilman Jackanen? Yes. Councilwoman Riker? Yes. Councilman Bannon? Yes. Councilman Bay? <coughs> yes. Councilman DeLine? Yes. Okay, Ordinance 19-06. It runs our present mayor clerk to execute power lease agreement and repeat a utilization agreement with North Jersey Police Radio Association pursuant to state statute. Okay, can I have a motion to open the meeting for public comments on Ordinance 19-06? Uh, so moved. Councilman DeLine? Second. Councilman Bennett, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Do we have a discussion on this? Or forget it? Yeah, it's a second. Yeah. Okay, you just want to give a quick update while we're talking about um, The borough utilizes the uh, tower that's on the on the hill up here uh, and has utilized it, I think, for, Bill would know better than me, but more than 1939. And each year we have to execute a new lease agreement in order to continue our use of that tower for the, uh, for the purpose of our police radio. Okay. Uh, anyone like to address just this ordinance? Seeing no one, can I have a motion to close the public meeting for Ordinance 1906? So moved. Councilman DeLine? Second. Councilman Jacanetta? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion to approve Ordinance 19-06 for final adoption. So moved. Council President Riker? Second. Councilman Bagg, roll call please. Councilman Jacanetta? Yes. Councilwoman Riker? Yes. Councilman Bannon? Yes. Councilman Bagg? Councilman Bagg? Yes. <laughs> Councilman DeLong? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thank you, Ms. Okay, under my report, I first I have a motion to appoint Matthew Carvella as a member of a redevelopment agency for a five-year term, January 1st, 2019 through December 31st, 2023. Ooh, that's a long time. <laughs> um, so moved. Council President Riker? Second. Councilman DeLine, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against. Okay, under my report, I've been very busy this week swearing in a lot of people, so I've been to a lot of meetings, um, and I hear all good things at every meeting I went to. Shea Tree is doing wonderful work with what they do, 
uh, you know, they have a lot of communication with our residents, and they seem to be handling that pretty well. And I think we're all caught up on our bills, if I'm correct. So we're starting our new year there. Um, I attended the planning board meeting. Uh, there was another uh, uh, talkative meeting about a new uh, car wash that is proposed on the corner of Hamburg Turnpike and um, Ringwood Avenue. Those were both county roads, so the traffic patterns and how the traffic would move in and out of that site would be up to the county. The county has already approved the uh, the movement in and out, so uh, the next step will be getting the finalized permitting for the car wash, and I think it has one more meeting at the planning board, and then we might be seeing some construction there on the corner of a nice uh, new uh, car wash there. It's a beautiful building. It's a beautiful uh, picture. Um, it's got some uh, uh, things in, in, in that car wash that most car washes don't, but more to come on that. Um, I attended the uh, 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 historical committee. Uh, I'm sure Eck will follow up on that. With more information there. We had a couple meetings. Uh, we, we spoke with the board administrator and the clerk and their attorney and some council people here about soliciting licensing. You know, we have to uh, license the solicitors that come in to town. Unfortunately, that is a federal protected thing right now. And unbelievable to me, they are allowed to go to your house till is it 9 o'clock? Mm -hmm. 9 p.m. They are allowed to ring on, knock on your doorbell, which is crazy to me, but it's protected by the federal government. So we're trying to figure out ways that we can work within the realm of what we have to do and still do the ID checks that we have to do on the people coming into town because they are checked and it does go through. Originally, it was going through the police department. We're still deciding on where it's going to go. But believe it or not, the, the soliciting part is, is uh, protected. That being said, we have a no solicit um, uh, website or, or list. list in town. If you sign up for that, which you can sign up for on our web page, they are not allowed to go to your house to solicit at any time. So I recommend any resident that is concerned about someone knocking on the door unannounced to get on that list. What happens is they come to the borough, they get their permitting, they get everything involved, we hand them the list. If they go to one of those houses on the list and it's reported, they no longer, there are fines and penalties involved and some of it is they can not continue what they're doing. So we are recommending here, we're trying to get as many people as we can to sign up on this list. That's one way we can keep the solicitors out of the town. Um, so again, you can go onto our web page and sign up. You can come in here to Borough Hall and sign up. Uh, but either way, you should try to get on that list. Excuse me. Um, are you in a position to pop it, pop it up at this council meeting to show where on the website people can go? No, we're not set up. We're not set up. Okay. Can we give a description where on the website they should go? Actually, right now, if you are on the main page and you go down to news and announcements, there's actually a news flash current talking about the no solicitation registration form. So you don't even have to go digging through Facebook. the website on where it is. Right. And Wait, let's start with the website. Yeah, so right okay. if you go scroll right down to the bottom where it says news and announcements, it's one of the, the news items. So if you click onto that link, it'll bring you to the it will bring you to the, the ordinance and then the form um, that you can fill out directly on the website. You don't have to print it out and email it or, you, or bring it in if you don't want to. You can fill out that form right on the website. So news and announcements and you are looking for the... It's right on the header. No, no I understand. The, the, the phrase you're looking yeah, for it's is... No, solici no, no, no solicitation, solicitation resident registration. Thank you. Okay, which brings me to our next page. We uh, just hired a uh, Mike Corelli out of um, Riverdale to be part-time and do all our correspondence on Facebook. So as we're all familiar, if you're on Facebook, there are many groups out there that run a lot of information. We'd like to have a borough web page information that really is the, is the truth of the matter when it comes to the borough. It won't be hearsay. It won't be through other groups. It won't be from, from somebody else. So we're trying to get people to sign up, and the uh, address is, correct me if I'm wrong, Borough Compton Lakes? Yes, if you if you go to Facebook and you search for Borough of Pompton Lakes, it'll take you to the borough. So the Borough of Pompton Lakes and this gentleman that we hired, Michael, will constantly be putting up information on that site about town activities, ongoings in the town, uh, recreation, any any committee or, or group that we have in town is will, can use him to put up their information. That's where I'm going to recommend all our residents get their town information from. Now, I'm sure there's other sites out there you can get it from, and I have no problem with the other sites. 
I'm trying to get the comments turned off on our website. We're still working on that. Um, but that would stop any of the bouncing back and forth and all the nonsense that goes on underneath a lot of those comments. We're just trying to get factual information out because sometimes when an emergency happens, it pops up all over Facebook in different var varieties of what's being said. In my opinion, if you want something to go with the town, this is where you're going to go. So it's the Borough of Pompton Lakes on Facebook. Uh, please take advantage of that. Uh, redevelopment is moving along. We've, the Salvation Army is pretty much down now. Uh, they're in the process of applying for their permits. Uh, so hopefully, if the weather holds out, they might start building there. If not, they'll have to wait out for spring. That's the first major project we've had going in this town in, I'm going to say, 50 years. Um, it's it's going to be about 50 units. It's going to match the, uh, the decor of the high school and the post office. It has underground parking that's associated with the building. I think it, all in all, it's a nice first project for our town. Um, again, I'm going to bring up the fact, I got the numbers today of what, what we're talking about in, in pilot. Uh, that, that property, which included the little mall to the left of it, pays about $44,000 in taxes. Out of that $44,000, only $12,000 of it is collected by the town. So we're only making $12,000 on that. When redevelopment kicks in, after the apartments are all rented, which will take about two to three years, we're looking at well over a hundred thousand dollars, hundred, hundred and twenty thousand dollars in collecting in our pilot program, with a gain of almost a hundred, hundred and ten thousand profit every year for thirty years, just on that one property. You do that two or three times, it's an extra four hundred thousand dollars into our into our coffers every year that will offset our taxes a little bit. Right now, this is the only way that I, that I can think of, and I think that we've been trying for many years, to offset the cost of taxes. With the pensions and the health care, the, these costs are going up skyrocketing every year, and we have to cover them. There's no argument there. We have to pay what they're asking for at that point. This is a way to offset those costs a little bit. We'll see how things go. We're taking it a step at a time. I think all our boards do a good job of looking over it and seeing what's going on. It's a learning curve, okay? This is our first project. I'm sure there's going to be bumps in the road. We'll work through them and we'll move forward from there. But all in all, at the end of the day, this is going to help every resident in town with their taxes. I am not telling you your taxes are going down. So don't go on Facebook down and say the mayor said your taxes are going down. They're going to be stabilized. Okay? Hopefully we can use that money when we have to go buy a fire truck. We have some money in the bank to buy it. We don't have to go out on a, on a loan to borrow money to get that fire truck. Um, and that is my report. Council President Riker. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to pick up where the mayor left off um, in terms of redevelopment. Uh, the mayor did a beautiful job describing the Salvation Army project to you. I, I just want to clarify because now that the building came down, people are, are sort of coming alive and constantly questioning us, asking us what's really happening. And the mayor described the project to you in, in detail. I, I just want to clarify, it's a rental. It's not a, a purchase because um, at different times in the economy, sometimes you, you hear that things will be condominiumized. This is intended to be both as a rental and it is primarily one and two bedroom units. Um, the uh, uh, diagram uh, is visible. Some of the diagrams that were presented to us, when I say us, I am the uh, council representative to the redevelopment agency and uh, we met uh, on for numerous years on this project. But the, if you're trying to visualize what this project will look like, there is a architectural drawing um, in the um, window of the, of the bid office. And the bid office is just a few doors away from the Cardinal Cafe on Montague Avenue. So as people, which brings me to another point. Um, he was talking about Michael Corelli being our um, uh, information, the, the information officer. Um, one of the things that uh, Michael is going to be tasked with is uh, working um, with Michael Fabrizio and myself to try to get some of this redevelopment information out to the public because, like we said, once the Salvation Army, once that building went down, people realized that, that redevelopment was really, that we've been working on behind the scenes for years and it's really beginning to happen. And as the mayor alluded to, we're trying to minimize the rumors, minimize the, the fake news, minimize the false information. And Michael is going to help us. A number of us, myself and uh, Councilman Begg and perhaps others, have been uh, uh, taking tons of photos as the process 
and we'll share whatever photos might be of help to, to Michael to help populate the, that Facebook page. Um, redevelopment um, has been active. We, um, the agency met last Thursday night for its regularly scheduled meeting, and we had a smaller project, very interesting project come before us. Um, it is a project that involves a property um, one of the last pieces, depending on which direction you're coming, last piece or first piece of property, as you um, leave Pompton Lakes going to Riverdale. And um, there it's a combination of uh, technically two lots. And uh, again, we saw architecturals and descriptions uh, for a project of, um, of nine uh, apartments. Again, a rental, having on-site parking. Um, and uh, they will be coming. This is not the first time they've come before the redevelopment agency. They're intended to come back to the redevelopment agency in a few weeks, and uh, hopefully at that point it will go, go on to the, to the planning board, or to us first than the planning board. No, they're done with the uh, uh, redevelopment. They're going to go to the planning board. They're going to go to the planning board. So they've been to the planning board already, but they're going to go back. They're going to go back. So I just so I want you to realize not nearly as big as the Salvation Army project, not in the downtown, but uh, success begets success, and and uh, redevelopers and builders are are paying that much more attention to. And, and I think it's six uh, one bedrooms and two uh, split between one and two bedrooms. It's, 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 it's handicapped in the, yeah, on the main. Floor. They're nice apartments, nice size apartments, right on Ringwood Avenue there. So they'll, they'll be nice apartments. Hamburg Turnpike. Nine and uh, there's not, there's, it's nine Hamburg Turnpike, oh, there, but I think there's nine units as well. I think there is. Seven? Seven. seven, seven. seven. Four okay. upstairs, three downstairs. So um, it's, a, it's a nice project. Again, th those um, those diagrams, since we're still working on them, are not, uh, are, are not in the bid office. But um, um, again, it's, it's uh, a project that, that I think you'll enjoy seeing as, as it evolves. Um, the bid tend, uh, or usually meets on the same day as the redevelopment agency, so they met early, bid met earlier in the day. I think Councilman Bague will go into much more detail, but just be on alert. There's another bid buck sale coming. Uh, it's Saturday, uh, February 9th, and the bid bucks are so successful during their um, discussions, they're trying to figure out ways to perhaps uh, increase the number of bid buck sales and spread it out. They were also very successful um, if you were at our uh, holiday stroll. Uh, they had bid bucks in smaller denominations. Uh, they gave them to the mayor to hand out to people as he went away, around, like the Pied Piper. And again, it, 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 it brought bid bucks to people who arguably never even knew what a bid, bid buck was. So. Um, uh, they are making some significant changes or proposing in their marketing strategy, marketing plan, but I think the bid bucks is, is um, if nothing, it, it won't be eliminated, it will probably be increased. Um, there's one other quick comment that I'd like to make. Um, some of uh, you are aware that um, there is a, a retaining wall that's being um, uh, may, uh, fixed on Summit Ave. And um, unfortunately, they're trying to do this in the middle of winter and dealing with storms and ice. And some of it is, is treacherous sometimes when we get these snow and ice storms. I just want to compliment um, the powers that be, the DPW, the police, and the contractor. Um, I, I went there several times. We were very concerned that we would be uh, it, it, that it would be inaccessible to get in and out, that the, the construction uh, machinery was so deep into the road and they were so spread out with all their construction um, with the boulders and, and, and other materials that when they were predicting this terrible weather, literally um, we could have been stranded on, on the other side of the hill. And um, uh, the police helped me um, engage with the contractor and reach out to the DPW. They moved their materials way far over so that at least they made a safe corridor to pass. Uh, it was salted very nicely, and I really want to thank everybody because we were really concerned that we were going to be trapped up there if, if you know, with the ice and storm that, that they had predicted. So they gave us enough of a right away that you could, with caution, pass safely. So.
I appreciate everyone's cooperation on that. Thank you. And just to follow up on that, since it is storm season, let's just remember if it's going to snow, you have to get your cars off the street. Uh, the, the cops or the police officers will not be uh, um, looking to find who owns the car. They're just going to put a ticket on it. Everybody's been warned before. We're just asking for 24 hours to clean the roads. Most towns don't allow you to park your car in the winter months. We're allowing you to park your cars on the street, but they have to be moved during a snowstorm. And, and it doesn't mean you can call the police department and say, I'll move it tomorrow. That's not going to work. We get a lot of those calls. It has to be moved once it starts snowing, so they have time to clean. This, year, this month, this last storm was pretty good. Most of the residents did get their cars off the street. Uh, there were about 20 that did not. Um, so unfortunately, they would get tickets for that. But uh, just keep that in mind. Councilman Lawton. Thank you, Mayor. Um, regarding the ordinance committee, I won't speak any more about the solicitor ordinance okay. because you covered it. But um, well, you, you did a fine job. <laughs> there's, nothing, there's nothing more to add. Um, for the sake of brevity, I'll move on. Um, but uh, the ordinance committee met on uh, January 15th, had a couple other items of discussion. Um, one is establishing a, uh, a statute regulating the parking of uh, commercial vehicles, trailers, and boat trailers on streets in the borough. Um, so there's you know, probably likely to be some ordinances coming out um, regarding that, um, not being able to park certain kind of vehicles overnight in the borough, um, the length of which uh, certain vehicles may be parked and, and, and those kind of things. And then the third item was I met with uh, Ray Malonga of Malonga Towing um, regarding recent changes to the state law via the Predatory Towing Act. Um, before this law change that occurred at the end of last year, um, towing companies were limited about what they could charge for certain tows, um, and in some cases not being able to charge at all. Um, the, with the, the change of the, the state law, um, Ray Malongo, I think, does is under contract to do towing for the borough currently. Um, is looking for some two or three, two or three. Yeah. right? And he's and he's um, part of the I think the Garden State Towing Commission, which is more or less an advocacy organization for towing companies, um, and they have some best practices regarding um, of towing charges and what vehicles and things like that to to what communities should generally uh, look to charge or have a, a towing company be allowed to charge. Um, those are in line with the state um, chart, state uh, police, what the state police allow, um, and is going to, and a number of other communities around, around Pompton Lakes um, are looking to make those changes. So he passed out that information. We discussed it quite a bit. I've just recently sent it to, to Joe for uh, consideration, and I think that the ordinance committee will, will discuss the potential changes uh, again. Um, the week prior, uh, the Environmental Protection Committee met for the first time the, this year. Um, generally, the committee discussed uh, recycling and exploring ways to partner with with the schools on other environmental programs. They have a number; the schools have a number of environmental clubs um, that the committee is interested in working with throughout the year. Um, for the Open Space Committee, which followed immediately after the Environmental Protection Committee, um, there's been a number of changes around the borough in terms of the. Uh, the employees, um, the voting districts, and the way um, our, the makeup of the Open Space Committee reads is that it requires um, a, a member of each one of the five voting districts, and it's very explicit that it mentions five voting districts. Well, we now have six voting districts. So that ordinance needs to be amended one way or the other um, because of because of changes over the years, um, I think a year or two ago, we added uh, Shade Tree Commission onto the Open Space Committee. The committee seems to be growing and growing, um, and we're looking at opportunities, I think, to right-size the committee. Um, another one of the committee positions is the environmental officer, um, who for the longest time has been at Barrow. We don't have the environmental officer anymore, so it really doesn't make any sense for that position to be on the committee um, as as somebody that needs to be counted against quorum. So, you know, we're, we're banding about it, uh, a couple ideas about how to best constitute a committee. Um, I expect in some way the committee will change of its membership of who can comprise of the committee. Um, however, at one way or the other, that, that ordinance will be, will be changing. Um, the second item um, that took up uh, much of the meeting was a discussion on uh, the Willowfield Complex improvements. 
Um, we're expected to apply for funding through Passaic County Open Space Trust Fund this year. Um, the last few years, we've gone after um, money for the, the Morris Canal Greenway, which is functionally complete. Um, that has been really the, the last three grant applications to the county. So this um, this Willowfield improvements would add would actually move to um, the the two T-ball fields closer to the snack stand um, and construct an additional um, softball little league field and some other um, changes that would I think um, improve the parking conditions and the circulation conditions around the area, make it a little bit more uh, safe for the users to cross. Um, from one set of the fields where the soccer fields are to the other set of the fields where the t-ball fields are and the other baseball fields. So um, the, the committee had looked at it prior year. Um, there's been some changes because it is potentially coming up for a required uh, hearing under Passaic County regulations. Um, we brought it back to the committee for discussion. The engineers um, will be making those changes and then again probably next month um, there will be a public hearing regarding applying to Passaic County for those for the funding to, to construct that project. You just mentioned replanting with it. Right. So some of the some of the improvements require the removal of existing um, existing trees, um, quite a few existing trees, and but also part of that is offsetting that and reforesting other areas. So where I mentioned that the T-ball fields will be moving away from. Um, we're actually going to be reforesting that area. Um, at the very least, in terms of acreage, it's a one-to-one, -one, if not more. In terms of trees, it's a one-to-one, -one, if not more. Um, it's actually further north and closer to the river, so I think it's actually an improvement. Um, if you're familiar with Willow Field Joe Grill Complex, past those gates is essentially a large, compacted gravel parking lot. I mean, it's, it might as well be asphalt. It's, it's basically impervious surface. That is where the softball fields go. So we're actually increasing um, pervious surface will improve drainage through that area at the same time reforesting and, and doing those kind of things. Um, and that concludes my report. Thank you. Yeah, that project's exciting, but let's talk about that a couple years in advance here. This is not happening very soon because we have to collect funds to make that happen. And the funds are coming from open space, uh, maybe from our open space, and from uh, the county open space. Um, they don't give it all in one chunk when they give that money out. So this could be a one to two to three year project as we see it. Fit. But I think at the end of the day, what Councilman Devine said was the most important part of it is, besides the, deforest the foresting of the trees, um, we're trying to centrally locate it so there's no accidents that could happen there. That roadway when it was built 50 years ago was perfect for what it was. Now it becomes a danger way for all the kids, especially the young kids, moving between the fields. So we're trying to limit that, that action of moving between the fields so there's no accidents there. So that I think it's all a good thing and hopefully it all works out. Uh, Councilman Jack another. Thank you, Mayor. wanted to uh, start off by thanking the Mayor for attending over various uh, swearing in. I know when they were with the Board of Health, he was also there at the uh, Shade Creek Commission uh, meeting. Uh, he swore in uh, for his third and fifth year term, Pete Walteri. Congratulations to Pete. Uh, so thank you, Mayor, for being there. And it was a good uh, dialogue and discussion, different things we wanted to do this coming year. Uh, so I know it was a productive meeting. Uh, also with that meeting, uh, just so we, everybody knows, uh, if somebody's interested, whether here or at home, uh, there's a two-year term uh, that's an alternate member that the Shade Tree is looking for. Altogether, there's five members now and an alternate. So we're short an alternate member. It's only a two-year term. Uh, and so if somebody's interested, uh, meet once a month, the second Monday at 7.30 p.m. right here in the office here. Uh, How much so, does it pay? Huh? How much does it pay? Uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so if somebody's interested, please let us know. Reach out to myself, the mayor. Uh, again, it's a two-year term. Uh, on a different note, I wanted to uh, let everybody know, which is pretty interesting. Uh, we talked about uh, something that happened. Uh, down at Pacifico Gallo Park, which is off of Midland Ave, uh, over by Twin Lakes, we had uh, a willow tree when I was on the term a couple years ago that we planted, a lot of the plantings. So what happens is we got a complaint that the tree was down. So actually, Randy went out there and looked at it, and it looked like a shade like a pencil. It was just it's like a beaver. 
Well, we actually confirmed it was a beaver. Oh, wow. That took down the tree. Wow. And it was a good six inches around. Actually took the tree down. So, yes, it is true. We have a beaver over there in the lake. So it took the tree. It was a nice looking tree, too. It was, a, I think it was a willow tree. That's good that we have one. Yeah. So it was a, and I think that willow tree flowered in the springtime, but it's a shame we lost it. But we're going to be, have to plant something out there to, to get that little bugger this way. You don't get the next tree. But just so you know, I thought it was pretty interesting. Uh, that we that, that that actually happened. Uh, like I said, we have a few things on the list, uh, a few more trees uh, to be cut, some more uh, prunings that are happening. Uh, we're getting the list together of, of plantings and also getting the list together for uh, trees that are scheduled to come down again and also with the uh, pruning this year. So we have a pretty aggressive list that we want to keep on going. Uh, so we discussed that and uh, so we have that going forward. And then the other thing I have was uh, before I came tonight, I got a call. He was going to try to make it to the meeting. He wanted to uh, voice his complaint. Um, I didn't get a chance to look. Uh, Bradley Glass was at 112 Summit. Said he walks throughout the town daily. Uh, he says to me he went actually by Mathis Ave, which is by the Falls, by George's Deli. And all along there, he said the trash was unbelievable. He made the left. On the doors or on? Well, going uh, from like Hamburg Turnpike by the Falls, yeah. by uh, the George's Market, all along there by the river. Uh, I guess the trash there, and then when you go up Riverview Road, you make the left onto Mathis. All along the wooded area, he said it was a lot of debris, and he actually went out up Riverdale Road past Albany, going into Riverdale, uh, all along there, the, the, the wooded area, almost across from Carlo Field. I guess was pretty uh, a lot of trash. That so some of that's county road, some of that's ours. So yes, I told him I will look into it. Uh, like I said, he called me tonight. Uh, you know, he said we wanted to be here, so he said uh, if I can please, you know, speak on this behalf, don't uh, tell everybody. So I would, and because uh, he wanted the rest of us to know, I told him I will look into it, and I have if we can, when the weather breaks at DPW or the county. All right, Kevin, uh, I'll look into those three areas. And I'm going to follow up with that because I just happen to be on Doors Highway today. And the, the right side of doors in the wooded area there, there's, right. a lot, there's a lot of garbage there. And and I think one resident brought it up before, and, I, and she is correct about it. There's a lot of uh, loose silt, or it looks like uh, loose stone there that's right. on, on, the, on the side there. So maybe we can get somebody to sweep that up or get the county to bring in the machine there and pick it up. Um, it looks like maybe it was from salt. Because I asked them, you know, sometimes usually uh, on recycling day, a lot of lids fall over the wind. It's always wind, you know. You know it's recycling day when it's windy. Wind comes, you know, tops off of barrels. They're all over the road. I asked him, was it a lot of that? He said it was a few of it, but it really wasn't. It was more than just that. So that was the only thing. Yeah, so maybe, you know, something from the garbage overflowed or whatever. But uh, but that's all. He wanted to bring it up, so I told him I would do that on his behalf. And uh, that's all I had. Okay, and I, just to follow up on the uh, stigma free, we're still working forward to the stigma free. We um, we got the grant. We're going to apply that to our stigma free community and see where we go with that. With the training, is that correct? Yes, correct. And uh, you're going on my behalf for the meeting coming up. Yes. Yes, I can't make this one, so thank okay. you. Okay, good. Okay, Councilman Bennett. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to congratulate the fire, uh, volunteer firefighters that were sworn in tonight, as well as all the other uh, board and committee members that were sworn in recently. Um, I was once a volunteer uh, EMT, so I know what it's like to be ripped out of bed at 3 in the morning in the cold and all that stuff. So I hats off to those folks that um, put in their time and, and still go to another job after putting in the time uh, in the night. Um, the uh, Historic Committee uh, Commission met last night. Um, the Schuyler House is for sale, the one that's over by the Elks. A lot of people were interested, um, have actually approached us and, and other members of the commission regarding that that historic home. Uh, it's over by the Elks. It's court currently boarded up, right? Oh, yeah. um, con condemned, I believe. A lot of work needs to be done. So the um, there's potential to purchase it not necessarily the town by ourselves, but uh, looking into grants and support from the county to assist in purchasing it and potentially turning it into a museum. Often Lake slash county slash boxing. If it would happen, it would be great. Yep. Uh, so there's a there's actually a grant meeting tonight over, I believe, in Totowa that some of the members are at and getting more information to uh, move that forward. Uh, we also can uh, discuss the formation of the uh, historical society, which would be the fundraising slash of, um, nonprofit. Nonprofit, sort of like the Friends of the Library, uh, to help uh, fundraise and staff the, the future Pompilates Museum. 
And lastly, we also discussed ideas for the 125th anniversary of Pompton Lake being incorporated, and that's coming up very quickly in 2020. That's my report. Just to follow up on the house, uh, the house itself is a historical house next to the Elk Lodge. It's in great disrepair and would probably have to be gutted to rebuild. But I agree with the historical decision that it would make a good museum, and maybe if we could go in in partners with the county in some way, and they have a piece of it for our museum of their use, and we use it for Pompton Lakes Museum. We have a lot of history in Pompton Lakes that's stored under people's beds and in people's closets right now. I'd love to see if we can get it into the museum there. Um, the price is pretty reasonable right now, but that's because it's falling apart. But there is historical uh, significance to the house itself. So hopefully we can move, move forward with that. I mean, that's right. Uh, Councilman Beg. Thank you. I received the Pompton Lakes Police Department report for the month of December and the year 2018 from Chief uh, Moses Augusto. There were 1,545 calls for service for the month of December and a total of 21,209 calls for service for the year 2018. For the month of December, there were 422 motor vehicle stops, 197 motor vehicle summonses issued. 21 motor vehicle accidents investigated, no DWI arrests, 18 alarm conditions burglary, 18 alarm conditions fire, 8 fire calls, 55 ambulance requests, 2 burglaries, 3 thefts, 10 domestic violence calls, no uh, sexual assaults, and no aggravated assaults. I attended the uh, Ponto Lakes Community Partnership, the bid meeting. On January 17th, President John Sugin presented the proposed 2019 bid budget totaling uh, $622,387.33. It was agreed that uh, Michael Corelli would be hired, uh, and you met, his name was mentioned here earlier, to handle the uh, bid website. Art Kafka reported that uh, bell tone <coughs> hearing aids and flip side records are applying for uh, bid grants for their facade. I attended the uh, Pompton Lakes Planning Board meeting on January 15th. The board voted it to appoint Michael Simone as board chairman and Richard Fricaro as the vice chairman. On the agenda was the continuation for a hearing of the car wash at 105 uh, Hamburg Turnpike. Approval is pending a meeting between the applicant, State County, and the borough, and we should finish that project uh, probably the beginning of uh, next month. And that's my report. Just go back to that bid number, that bid tax that you gave of 622000 which, you know, is a large amount of money. That is collected from the business, the landlords of the buildings, uh, that does not come from uh, taxes, tax dollars from the residents. It comes from the uh, owners of the properties. That money then gets turned back, goes back into improvements in the town. So that bid uh, assessment that's put on the um, landlords helps us improve our downtown. So the, some of the Christmas decorations you saw this year that were new were bought with that. The, uh, the walkways were built with that. The new lights that we bought 10 years ago were bought with that kind of money. So it's a partnership with the town and the bid to make our improvements in downtown look good. And I, and I think it's working. And I think uh, I give credit to the landlords for putting an extra tax. You know, everybody has enough taxes as it is already. They have to pay a little extra tax every year for, for the bid, but it's well worth it at the end of the day. One of the things that I mentioned at the bid meeting is uh, I would like to see the expansion of the lighting for the holiday season to go up through uh, the Cool Town area and down on Hamburg Turnpike. Cool Town. I'm dating yourself. Where the A&P used to be, up there. <laughs> Wendy's, <laughs> the TD Bank. No A&P either. Yeah, no. <laughs> Thatcher's. That's, yeah, Thatcher. that's better. Okay. Um, <laughs> a professional report. Uh, administration report. Uh, just a couple of things, Mayor. I provided council with my report uh, last week. Um, provided a council copy of the 2019 this management plan from our insurance fund, a copy of the December month report from our uh, IT consultant from uh, State County. Uh, also, a uh, proposal for Willfield improvements in his estimate and the um, and a potential uh, design of what's going to happen there has now changed a little bit um, because the County uh, Open Space Committee has changed its rules and regulations 
First of all, the challenge can only apply for two grants now than they used to apply for three before. The grants can be no more than $250,000 per grant, and there's no longer staffing. So what happens is, what I was talking about tonight is that we have an updated version, which divides this plan into three or four sections of different projects. Each of them will have to apply for the movement of fuels one year, and then the walking path the next. So it's not going to be able to stack the funding like we had in the past for tennis courts and so forth and so on. And that's because there's a lot of towns, like the borough of Constellation uses this money, who haven't used the money in years. So the county has money that's obligated against their overall pot of money that really has not been used and is really impacting all of us as other communities who can maybe benefit by that money that hasn't been used. So going forward, we're going to make sure you can only get one pot for one year, you spend it, you can add an additional pot going forward. So I actually have those plans for next month's meetings in court. But we're going to use those plans for our open space application that I think is due in March. We received our tonnage grant from the state recycling, DEP recycling. It's a 2016 tonnage grant. What happens is the grants aren't done sequence for years. So right now, next year we'll get the 2017 tonnage grant, 2019. And the tonnage grants are based upon the amount of solid waste that's taken out of the waste stream. So our grants are usually in $12,000, $13,000 because truthfully, our solid waste has not really changed in terms of year in, year out, how much typically we take out of the waste stream. The only time it does change is when we have a major flood and solid waste is a lot higher. So our recycling tonnage grant for this year is $12,455. The DEP sent out information about the matching grants. But it's important to understand they're matching grants, but they're matching grants with no loans. And based upon our bond rating, we could probably do better on our own bond rating than taking out a DEP loan. So the sewer is just going to do that to confirm that. I also provided the council a copy of the Mel Cyber Bulletin. There have been a couple of towns that were hit with ransomware. And speaking to Dean, except for not having all our stuff stored in the cloud, which is like the last possible need for security, we were pretty much well equipped with our backup systems, whether it be off-site or on-site, relative to our computers. And lastly, something that Debbie Lohr sent me, who was a planner doing work for our board and so forth, is that there's going to be a seminar or a meeting down in the Brunswick Future Redevelopment Forum. And she says it would be very good relative to redevelopment moving forward. COA, a whole bunch of things are being done. I have a little copy of that in the back of my report saying where and when in the website. I know one of the towns I was talking to, one of the residents was Randolph. Randolph had to pay the saboteur $45,000 to get their information back from the computer virus that they got at their town hall. So I'm glad we're trying to address that and look at it, because there's three towns locally here that got caught with this whole thing and ended up having to pay money to get their information back. So that's a scary thought when you think when you're dealing with a town or a county or something like that. So any questions from the ministry? Well, I have one more thing. Oh, go ahead. The budget on my end, this first rough draft is complete. I sent it over to Jim to see who I am tax-wise, and then we'll tweak it from there. But that's been done. I received everything except for the fire department capital requests. So we have that kind of line. So hopefully early February we'll have our first finance meeting to go over the budget and see where we're at. And just to follow up on Council President Riker, how are we making out at Summit Avenue? We're just about done with all the work there, right? The what? Summit Avenue. Yeah, they had to do a new adjustment to the wall a week or so ago. They went out and took laser shots and for our engineering, so it was a little off and we readjusted it. But they should be done with the actual construction of the wall, if not this week, by next week, it should be finished. And then we'll have to wait now probably this spring to do any of the road work, stuff like that. Unfortunately, I mean, truthfully, they had a really horrible season of working. And we've had so much rain, it's been, you know, we're getting another two inches again, potentially tomorrow. It's, you know, it's not been a good year weather-wise for the years. Any questions for the administrator? No. Okay. 
Uh, I have a motion to open the meeting for public comments. So moved. Councilman Devine? Second. Council President Riker, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Anyone like to address the council? Please step up. <coughs> this is about anything, right? Yeah. yeah. My name is Gregory Cockapair, 26 Albert Street, Compton Lakes, New Jersey. I was reading my family's history. My mother's a Dickinson. She went to Falcon Lakes High School from Wayne, when, when Falcon Lakes High School at Wayne. But one of the Dickinson clan, I work with the DuPonts. Interesting. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, they invested in the DuPont family. So you know when I gave you that report? I didn't realize that. Well, you know, I think you still have it. Oh, we do? Well, I'm not finished with that yet. Okay. And it's going to get done because I know it. <laughs> now, also, they work with them. See, my family owned clipper ships and other things. They were my family. On one side, was very wealthy. My father's side of family was quite wealthy, too, but like everything. But anyway, I've been wanting to, to help this town for a very long time about this. I went to high school here. I'm glad you're, you know, but the apartment complex is going to look excellent in front of that high school. Downtown is going to look excellent. But you need, a, you need a tax base, and the future is those hills. I only want the summits of those. I don't want the valleys where the pollution is. I'm sure the, the pollution is <laughs> not up there. Yeah, well, we did the, the fact that, that my family actually worked with the DuPonts, I said, geez, maybe there's a reason why I'm saying this today. <laughs> maybe. And I, I just feel that, that, that something needs to be done with that property, but it needs to be done right. And it needs to be done small enough that it helps the town, but not too big that it hurts the town. That's all I wanted to say. Okay, thank you. Okay. You know, the, as you know, the EPA and DEP are overseers of that site, so they're going to come up with a plan with us, and hopefully we can make something work there. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else from the public would like to address? Please step up. Uh, Randy Hinton, 443 Montclair Ave. Just a question for Councilwoman Riker. You were talking about the big buck sale. Yes. What time is that start? It usually starts at 11, but people tend to line up around 10, 15, 10, 30, because okay. they sell until they run out. From 11 o'clock, yes. Yeah. And they, they ran out pretty fast the last time. Is there any talk of them increasing the amount that they're going to sell? They're, they're trying to figure out. They're, they're trying different things. They're trying to increase the number of sales and limit how many they do each time because they've gotten much um, – uh, they've gotten more strict with how they sell them in terms of one per family. So there, uh, I think there's a marketing meeting coming up, and Monday. they're they're they're, and they're, they're, te they're, tr they're discussing different things. They're going to have four sales a year now, and uh, I believe the, it'll be eight thousand dollars in bid bucks each each of the sales. At each sale. And don't forget, though, that, that they're paying the 50 percent at the cost of when you buy the bid box. So what is it? 20, it's 25 percent now, right? 50. So you know, they have to limit how much they can spend as the bid to put out, you know, because they're, they're picking up a cost of each bid dollar that's spent. So that they, they have a budget that they have to kind of stay within. The largest component of their, of their marketing budget is, strict, is clearly bid box. Uh, much more so than advertising and, and, and other things, and they're continuing to run with it because it seems to be very successful. And there, it's really helping bring people in from neighboring communities. <coughs> no, it's very successful. <laughs> right but you got to be there. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, it technically opened. They opened the door at 11. I think um, the last time people started lining up around 10:15. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, for Shade Tree, I want to thank uh, Sharon, Sonny, and, and Dawn for getting our plaque put up in the Looks very nice in that corner. They did a very nice job on it. I was asking about that the last time. They jumped right on it. So. And actually, I want to thank them in general. We're, as you can see, we're updating our, our lobbies and our, our hallways and, and rehanging. And we had it paint the borough, had, had the whole building painted. So slowly, we're trying to bring it back to uh, a better looking building. And we got some new furniture there. And the new plaques are going up. So hopefully, no, this, this we'll look nice. at um, Just one other question. You were talking about the Salvation Army <laughs> and that it pays $12,000 for the borough. The rest of that forty-six thousand dollars was that part of the board of education and, and the county and to the county. Yeah, eighteen percent, and then the, what is it, twenty-six? Five percent. The county was for a pilot. No, not pilot. This is pre-pilot. 
Free uh, and, and then the rest goes to the school. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else from the public would like to address? Seeing no one, can I have a motion to close the public session? So moved. Councilman DeLine? Second. Councilman Bennett? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Well, privilege of the floor. Anybody have privilege of the floor? Yeah, Mayor. I forgot uh, in my report to add the uh, Shade Tree Commission last month's hours for the five members, a total of 44 hours altogether. So again, I apologize for that. Uh, my, my report, uh, 44 hours of last month total. You must hours. be new to their group and trying to kiss their ass or something. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anything else? That's it. So. <laughs> uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> but the beaver, but the, the beaver is cutting down trees. The beaver.